You know, guys, there's so many military games that are just like run and gun, shoot them and loot them, that the fact that there is a military horror survival game at all kind of makes my day. Guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and today we are taking a look at Rimi Down Unders Unleashing the Light of Allah with Maxor. This is his review of a game called House of Ashes. Uh, I'm excited, obviously. Uh, so let's crack into it. Just Fuck. declare for a rock! <laughs> oh my god! I'm just gunning people down! Okay. Uh, Remy sounds excited about gunning people down. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this is exactly a rootin' tootin' shoot 'em up military game. Maybe I had it wrong. Do you, do you, want, do you want to be Balathu or Kurum? Start as Balathu or Kurum. Ah, this, what a meaningful choice. I don't know what either of those things are. The two guys I, I'm, I'm feeling Balathu. You feel, I, I am I'll take feeling Kurum Balathu. Then. Oh god, it's Sargon of Akkad. Oh no. Oh no, he's gonna be a talking head on the internet. No! Please, I did can't listen to more patronizing right-wing talking points. Oh my god. I do, I do whatever Sargon asked me to. Holy shit, I see what you mean. King's just kind of hanging out. Sorry. I, it, what, so when you take something that you... An, an insecurity that you have, and you complain about other people doing it, that is sometimes called projection. It's when you're projecting your insecurity onto somebody else. So the fact that I am a talking head on the internet, and I hate, hate strident self-righteous talking heads on the internet because i know in my heart that there's a chance with just a little more attention that sweet sweet nectar of attention that i too would be sitting there being like let me tell you how the whole world works let me tell you how to be a, a, a real what what i know good good and bad is and let me tell you who the bad guys are right i'm not that removed from that I depend on you fans to honestly keep me in line and just tell me when I'm becoming too much of a smug, self-righteous asshole. You know, he's preparing to rant. And Obviously, for a number of political talking heads, they their fans have failed. In front of the microphone, he lives in a pig statue of himself. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh no, they cancelled him. He got banned on Twitter, holy fuck. I'm just leaving. I'm literally racist oh, against Scootians. Uh, I, I, I can just leave? Hello? What? Uh, the, oh, you got us. I've got to show you what's happening to my screen right now. Hold on. Hey, it's really blurry, Remy. What yes. the fuck? <laughs> I walked back through the door, and because of depth of field. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I can see you holding the Wait, wait, just go. Wait, just go what? <laughs> I can literally see you pacing back and forth through the door. <laughs> Come on! Okay, I can't tell if this is supposed to be really weird and bizarre. Because it is. Rock is shit! Come on, do it! <laughs> so guys, fun fact, I think... So I'm inferring that this is supposed to be set in ancient Mesopotamia, right? And... What's cool is that ancient Mesopotamia is is called the cradle of civilization because it's one of the earliest like definitive records, archaeological records of what we consider civilization. That is to say, a large group of people under a single like multi-layered hierarchical government and accompanying things like trade, agriculture, and specialized industry, right? Because there were tri agricultural groups who had a sort of hierarchy to them, but they generally didn't have artisans or craftsmen. Whereas in ancient Mesopotamia, there, there were. As you, I mean, look at this guy's armor, right? It, it, and and this is, I don't know how if this is like super accurate, but I think it's broadly accurate to our understanding, right? So there's obviously metalworking because of his weapon of some kind. Uh, I think bronze was usually what they used at this time period. You had leather working through his uh, leather cuffs, and you have what appears to be either a leather or metal helmet, right? So that tells you that there are some real artisans that this uh, civilization can support. It's not just an agrarian village under a, a chieftain. 
Max Max. And obviously the stonework involved in constructing uh, palaces and other art forms is another sign of what, what we consider like an organized civilization. Max. Hello? I, Max. I, I have no buttons to press, Remy. I mean, what's sort of fascinating is that, remember, in the, you know, this is probably, I think, between, I don't know, probably between about 3000 BC and 1000 BC, is that human beings, right, there wasn't, like, globalized trade really happening. You know, maybe a, a little bit of, like, ideas were sort of slowly percolating across sort of smaller trade routes. But what's fascinating is to see how different people in different parts of the world who were basically not connected to each other at all encountered and solved similar problems right so like this this sort of stonework and this artisan ship uh, is something you would see almost at the same time in mayan civilizations in the yucatan right so here's people who never met a babylonian but also were engaged in much of the same sort of of I don't want to say level of development, but in civilizational activities, right? But obviously they use the natural resources they had. So in the Yucatan, you saw things like obsidian blades instead of metal blades. Uh, but you, can you like aim your- Because why would you make a metal blade when you had razor sharp glass stone? Thing? Do you have to aim your no. shot? No, I have, a, I, I have a blank screen. What? I'm just- well, I, I, I see you in slow motion. I see you in slow motion. Hello? Okay, I'm gonna press B. It doesn't do anything, okay? It worked that time! It worked, okay. Oh! Oh! Yeah, dodge- Yeah, suck him! Fuck Whoa. yeah! Wait, do we actually- Are we two, like, characters that actually just survived? No fucking way. That would be amazing. If we- Oh. Never mind. Oh, yeah, no, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, it's pretty funny. Man, I think we're gonna make it. Oh, that was not how I thought this was gonna start. What's up, Marine? Can't you keep up? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? CIA field officer commanding an abrasive. Interesting. Okay. I'm seeing. Uh, okay. Force recon. Confident. Jason. Intolerant. All right. Um. So, all right. Let's break down some of these characters. So it looks like our boy. Uh, Jason Kolchak. Uh, so Force Recon. Now I believe they're called Marine Corps Special Operations. Um, and but before that, Recon Marines were seen as the elite and highly selective groups of the Marine Corps that generally received the Marine Corps Special Operations type missions. Um, like a lot of Special Operations forces, they were allowed to have a much more liberal uniform interpretation. Um, so you can see what he's got going on here. He has a uh, what we call an IBA. Let's see if we can get the mouse involved. Yeah, this bulletproof vest is looks. No, I'm sorry. It's um, interceptor body armor, right? Where it the plate folds in and then Velcro holds it in place over top, sort of like a double-breasted jacket. Um, but what's interesting is this is multicam. This pattern wouldn't be developed for another. 15 years at least and wouldn't be widely adopted for another 18 probably um but what you would more likely see would be the three color desert pattern um also this uniform uh, i mean this isn't a uniform this is just a t-shirt and a silly hat that says remember 9 11. um but it's interesting it just says remember 9 1 oh 9 slash and then it's supposed to be an 11. Um, let's see where you're going with this um yeah and then he has a what looks like he has a, 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 he doesn't have a chest rig. He has where something where a chest rig should go, but he doesn't actually have it, right? So the point is, this is a really, a dumb uniform for a Marine, a recon Marine. Recon Marine, 100% could dress how they wanted, but they would definitely wear the interceptor body armor, but probably the recon Marines would have maybe the newer stuff. They would have had desert patterned IBAs or intercept, yeah they would have had desert pattern IBAs. Um, and they would have their chest rig actually on their chest so they could access their magazine pouches, right? Why would you wear a, a chest rig that you can't get at anything? It's in cold check. Right, I'm watching a sex scene. 
your courage. Oh my God, President Bush! This is just actually a video of him. Made this day possible. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, Strub. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yep. This is so. For those of you that don't need, know the context, um, famously. Uh, the Bush administration's plan was to go into Iraq, depose Saddam, and install a friendly democratic government. Um, obviously, the administration didn't need to think about the culture, history, or organization of Iraq because they were so sure that democracy would solve all of their problems overnight. Right? Not realizing that Iraq was just a little bit of a different culture than the United States, and the democracy that took here uh, also took a long time to really get itself going. But they ignored that. So they came in, U.S. military did what it does absolutely better than anyone in the world, which is defeat the other person's military. They rolled into Iraq, Bush showed up on an aircraft carrier, said, thanks for your service, you guys kicked butt, Iraq is now our friend. And then, un uh, unexpected to everyone in the administration, but to no one else's surprise, a huge guerrilla insurgency emerged initially it was some of it was former saddam loyalists but a lot of it was uh ethnic groups who wanted independence from iraq or who had old scores to settle with other ethnic or sectarian groups you also had uh religious clerics vying for power there were a lot of factions a lot of contentious factions who basically saddam kept the lid on through fear and oppression all this to say Right, that speech on the aircraft carrier with the big mission accomplished banner is is now considered a sign of George W. Bush's hubris in that affair. So Rachel King, CIA uh, operative, director of operations. Okay, that's correct. The CIA's director of operations are their field agents, right? Who generally are undercover. In contrast, the uh the cia has other directorates who focus on things like processing and synthesizing information to help people in like state department or uh, high level diplomats or um, national security people make informed decisions about national policy those people their jobs aren't their jobs are secret but that they work for the cia is not a secret so she is probably actually undercover undercover Okay, she's supposed to manage field operations as acting CO for U.S. Marine Force Recon. All right, no Marine Recon unit would ever allow a CIA operations officer to become a commanding officer. The CIA may, like, have, maybe would have Marines attached or would have directed, be directed to support them, but they would never allow Marines to be commanded by a CIA officer. The distinction is pretty important. Um, because obviously a, there are things that only a uniformed company commander has the legal authority to do, such as uh, punish a Marine right, using uh, the mil Uniform Code of Military Justice. Evaluate satellite data from some program to locate WMD sites. Ah, yeah. The original reason we went into Iraq was to uncover, well, weapons of mass destruction. There weren't any. Act as liaison between rebel factions and coalition forces. Ah, okay, this was, this is, rebel factions is probably a reference to the only real armed resistance that showed up in the wake of the invasion, and that was in Iraqi Kurdistan. Um, and the Kurds remained the U.S.'s staunchest allies, and we uh, left them out to dry, and the Turks basically tried to massacre them. Um, and a lot of veterans, you know, me among them, are pretty salty about how the Kurds were sort of used as America's staunchest and most capable allies, and then sort of um, abandoned there in the north of Iraq north of Iraq to be crushed by Turkey um, to fight with ISIS in Syria, right? The U.S. has a huge debt to the Kurds, and they really, um, they really got left behind. Deployment will commence. Your deployment commences March 25th at 0800 hours. Uh, secure transfer will be arranged from your office to Langley Air Force Base. Uh, okay, maybe that's how they, your deployment commences is weird. Normally, you would be placed on orders, I guess. I don't know. Our job is actually, like, I'm reading my orders right now. My job is literally to search for weapons of mass destruction. That's my job. Well, oh my god. It's, <laughs> that, that was a joke. Does your name happen to be Rachel? Uh, I don't want to... Oh, no. I'm cucking you, aren't I? Rachel's my wife. What the fuck is that? Modern art or something? 
This is footage from the highly I, classified Kalos It's program. just a map. Doesn't know what that is. <laughs> it's just a map. He just Third doesn't know what a map is. First. Things weren't so great between us. We've been through worse. A lot worse. They've been through worse than Iraq? Please, rage. <laughs> Uh, Afghanistan, probably, actually. The CIA were some of the first teams to go into Afghanistan, partnering with the Northern Alliance to overthrow the Taliban. Um, there were initially a CIA team or two to sort of set the ground conditions, then a uh, number of special for Army Special Forces teams sort of scaled it up, eventually overthrowing the Taliban and installing the uh, secular uh, regime under Hamid Karzai. He's such a simp. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> I can just show up in any scene you're talking in. Maybe I'll get you some Velcro boots so you don't have to worry about your shoelaces. I'm just like, wait. <laughs> you just leaned back looking at the ceiling. Wait, they gave part of. Okay, all right. So they, this is this is all over the place. Um, okay, so she's I guess talking a bunch of shit to these other Marie Con Marines, the rest of whom are dressed like regular Marines. Okay, and this is, um, yeah, this is funny. Expected to be under Iraqi control in 2007, right? So this is obviously uh, an idealized look at the country partitioned broadly into the Sunni, Shia, and Kurdish regions. Of Iraq to Pol The northern which, well, mm, the way north, Mosul, like, Erbil, uh... Yeah, I think the Kurdish region extends from, like, Kirk up to Erbil, right, across here. Mosul is, of course, not. Mosul, I think, is strongly Shiite? No, Sunni. Sunni, I think. Polish command? Really? Now we get to play Yeah, the Poles were a huge ally of the United States in Iraq. And now that they are confronting uh, in a resurgent Russia here two decades later, um, the U.S., I think, has actually done its best to be a strong ally of Poland. We have a lot of multinational training missions. We have a lot of forces stationed there. Um, yeah, and, and you know, the, the Polish military, I was stationed at a base with them. They were extremely competent. Uh, Task Force White Eagle really 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 professional soldiers the Iraqis that's right I'm just currently marching around my house trying to find things Go! we just threw a silent flashbang at them I my scene had me raid a building yeah but like half the audio was completely broken so I threw like very silent flashbangs <laughs> I just shot somebody but played no noise and I just kind of was heard it an go, insurgent Ooh. or is it just like no it was a guy I can see uh, Eric currently talking to some soldiers. I almost had the depth of field glitch where I walk somewhere and it just sent me to Super Mario Land. <laughs> All right. What the fuck? Okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just shot an RPG at one of the choppers. <laughs> you motherfucker. It's fine. <laughs> That's me on the hill shooting you. Fuck. I'm hit. Oh, you actually shot at me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what's interesting about this is it depicts, uh, I guess, a holdout squad of Iraqi soldiers um, doing some sort of ambush on U.S. forces. Uh, okay, I guess this is plausible for 2003. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Oh, damn. Shit, fuck. Dude, I'm, All right, I'm, I'm take so you happy out, right now. We rocked your shit. Merwin's going oh, mental. God. Yo! Oh my god, I just gunned a dude down. Okay, I'm questioning the use of the uh, pro masks, the gas masks. These are, I mean, I guess if you really believe that there's an imminent chance this site has chemical weapons, maybe, maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is them looking for WMDs and they're wearing the pro masks, the, sorry, pro masks, the protective masks uh, to make sure they don't breathe it in if they accidentally leak sarin gas or something oh, no. i think i'm gonna dump fo like white phosphorus on you in a second i'm not sure <laughs> permission to use wps approved Burn him out. <laughs> oh no you just really painted my boys 
You bastard! <laughs> yeah. I'm Ooh. watching them all burn! I authorized it. I can Get just fun. declare for a rock! <laughs> I'm just gunning people down! <laughs> We're literally doing everything possible to just massacre <laughs> each other. <laughs> <laughs> This is so much fun, honestly. Shoot another civilian if I want. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching that scene right now. All right, yeah, you die. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty interesting conceptually as a co-op mode. Um, pretty ice cold uh, gameplay, though. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Okay, uh, let's back up a couple of frames and take a look at this Recon Marines weapon. Yeah, that's way more than I think... I've ever seen anyone in 2003. I mean, I've seen people with the collapsible buttstock, which you can see there. Um, I've seen people with an ACOG. I guess that's what this is supposed... Oh, sorry, a um, M68 close combat optic. I've seen those. Um, I don't know if I've seen a flat top. You see how there's no carry handle? That is like a flat top M M4. I think that came a little later. I think most of these had the close combat optic mounted to the uh, carry handle, um, an underbarrel grenade launcher, and an underbarrel flashlight under that. Uh, I haven't seen that, not in 2006. Yeah, I think this is a little advanced for uh, for 2003. Oh! Oh! <laughs> what? How did I... Oh, oh, the earthquake. I thought I just suddenly missed. I like how it wasn't like the whole floor collapsed, just very specific spots collapsed and people just happened to be standing <laughs> on all of those. Hello? Jason? 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 Huh. What the fuck is that? What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, I just saw the monster. Just like straight up. I saw something. What do you mean, Sean Philbin? I mean, it wasn't human. So it's like Kurdish. Jesus, I'm trying. Ouch. Wow, he really is uh, role-playing that 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 uh, Iraqi guardsman. Is that barbed wire? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I'm right, still bro. holding his... Oh. <laughs> don't, don't American police him, please. I... What? Nick, you're choking him. What? Can I Did I just choke him to Nick, death? I didn't mean he's gone, Nick. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, this is dark. This is dark and weird. <laughs> I, I just what? had his mouth covered. I. He's dead. He actually needed that oxygen so bad. I am kind of. Um, I mean, okay, so, yeah, you you can. Do you have to cover someone who's, like, panicking long enough? You you can, right? If you don't have oxygen, you don't have oxygen. Um, human beings, you're looking at maybe five minutes, but that would be shorter. For example, let's say you had your nose broken, and you were actually having blood, like, drip down your nasal cavity. If you can't breathe, then it's possible that blood could, like, get into your lungs, um, and you could have some sort of issues there, right? So, I think that's probably more likely what they're describing. Sad that I didn't keep Momon alive, that I kind of fucked up, but I also kind of think that's probably the funniest way he could die is by you accidentally choking him to death. That was so fucking weird. <laughs> it was just... Like, what? I wasn't even, like, holding his throat. I was holding his mouth. Yeah, I go, you, you can do it. You can cover someone's mouth and nose and, like, you, you can suffocate them. You won't choke them. You'll suffocate them. And, like, that's not how choking people to death works. Like, like if you let go, they can just breathe again. <laughs> yeah, again, it, you'd have to cover their nose and mouth, right, for a, a, a more than five minutes. Probably something like, like... Yeah, it's, I'd say five minutes if you're assuming somebody who's wounded and panicking and their body's burning a lot of oxygen. It would be hard to do. But if they're already wounded, it, I think it's more possible. He really, he would have just gone unconscious. Yeah. And breathed as soon as he let go. Oh, I just found a dead American. Wow, you you look fucked up. <laughs> Another one of your victims. Huh. Don't. Wow, that's like a vampire, I think. No, and now I'm just yelling at it. I don't even have a weapon. I'm just yelling. Cool. You're so strong. <laughs> My yelling caused an earthquake. As one does. Gigavax. 
Oh my god! <laughs> Not even joking! I yelled at it, an earthquake happened, and then a truck fell on it and it died. This is like some sort of Dune situation where you can like say your name and it's like -na 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 -na, the weirding way. -na 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 -na, and then you've killed something. What? And now my character is losing his shit. He is just laughing. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> He's actually laughing. I, there's, his a, ass there's a reason you were able to kill like 20 billion Americans there. <laughs> Holy shit! I am the chosen warrior of Allah. I think you caused 9 11 telepathically. Ooh, man. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Oh, oh! I don't know how I'm gonna report this on YouTube's content certification. Oh, so that's I'm just gonna ignore it. That's what shot the door. He must mean he caused uh, uh, 7-Eleven, right? He telepathically caused uh, Slurpees and and those like not very good hot dogs and taquitos. Caused all of it telepathically. Just dreamed it up. That's fucking cool. I like to have a Vickers here. Interesting. How's the lake holding? Probably generator. Lake. Oh, you mean the prosthesis? I lost my life back on the highway. Gee, what? Jesus. Eric went from being a simp to like being so mad the moment I mentioned his leg because he's got a prosthetic leg. He said nothing had changed between us. But I've changed. This is, uh, this is not great voice acting. Also not great writing. Shut the fuck up, you <laughs> simp. Our time spent away from each other. Bro, you were I'm literally ambushed me. by Iraqis and now you're in the vampire lair. We will seal this place for eternity. For all mankind. Man, I'm sorry. Man was straight recording this while they were fighting. Whoa, holy! What? <laughs> what? Oh, that's Da. I think. I do like that this dude was just like, yeah, there's monsters, but I'm taking my chance to get any American. Okay, I'm just gonna point this out. The the ear mounted flashlight right here. Um, tactically is utter nonsense uh you would never in a million years rock something like that uh why not in an environment where people were trying to shoot you why because it's a giant light that says brain here i can kill i can unhand me simp no, no, no. hey this is nick this is uh this is the guy she's fucking by the way yes oh Oh, bye. Rachel! It shows for me. <laughs> okay, see, that's a chest rig that makes sense. And that's actually a really old school um, Soviet era chest rig. Look, you can see the wooden toggles holding those mag pouches closed. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Monsters? Come on. You're jumping at shatter sure. with all due respect. Lieutenant, we're trapped down here with an enemy Iraqi, maybe more. Whatever you think you've seen, it's bullshit. Didn't Eric literally like Statue. Does he Nick, think that that recording Nick was just a bunch of British guys like imitating bats in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I forgot they didn't they just Look, didn't mention the recording. Let me remind you that I make the decisions. I'll lead the way. Yeah, how about you do that, Eric? Yeah, okay. How about Eric. you lead the way? Okay, Eric. No one's gonna complain. Oh, I, I, I can't get, uh, I'm going to say nothing and hope that he takes the lead. <laughs> nope. I'm fucking nope. beta male. Fucking. Me, you don't. <laughs> we didn't even say anything. We just took the lead. I just don't want any of the Iraqi characters to die ever. <laughs> <laughs> They're very precious. Yep. It was still alive. Pete 1911, you motherfucker. Jesus Christ. I just threw my gun at him. Wait, now I have a pistol Please. again. How many pistols? Oh, so strong. <laughs> Salim is unbeatable. I'm about Holy to give this shit. monster the power of daylight. <laughs> Witness Allah's light. <laughs> yes! Yes! Burn, you fucker! <laughs> now, I love how he hops down like, got him. I did that. I kicked him so hard he lit on fire. Infidels when they encountered the holy light of the law. <laughs> shit. Concealed carried flare gun. I'm beating the shit out of him with a fucking bit of metal right now. Like straight up, I just grabbed a bit of metal and I'm winning. That is not the position of someone who's winning. I'm just gonna point that out there. If if the other person has gravity working in their favor, they are winning. Salim cannot be beaten. I just killed the thing. It's dead. Get fucked, idiot. 
Oh, Ooh. get him, Salim. Salim! Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to mention the fact that on my son's 18th birthday, I blew up two helicopters and killed a bunch of Americans. It's his present. <laughs> what the fuck, Joey? So... Joey is a... He's horns now. What? Joey oh, is like Clarice a zombie. Joey's about to get horns. It's, I, we're actually fighting zombie Joey because he's starting to look like him a little bit. Yeah, she is Clarice actively turning in front of me. Oh god, okay, yeah. And I just used the UV light to instantly set him on fire. <laughs> there we go, we've hacked that. <laughs> I'm just investigating, I guess. Oh shit! Run. Now, go! Wait, Clarice is here? She's alive? <laughs> oh, she's definitely turning into a zombie. There's something I did well. Interest okay, I mean, I, I, obviously, now that everyone's turning into zombies, I have so little commentary to add. Um, I don't know what you do when everyone- when all your friends are zombies, man. I don't know. It means they watch too much TikTok. Now that's all they do. Just waiting. Oh. <laughs> Just play on their phones like zombies. <laughs> Eat shit, Eric. <laughs> Look at Eric. <laughs> Seethe, co-parter, co-parter nerd. He, Everyone's he... getting some love except for him. <gasps> <laughs> That's the best you got. Nick Stop just it. beat the shit out of him. Come on. Now we're talking. Oh shit. Yeah. Wow, that's an old school like a Vickers machine gun, right? That is uh that big tube at the end. I think I think it's full of water to water cool the barrel. I gotta Obviously, we later found that just switching the barrels out as the machine gun fires um, every so often is actually a more effective way. Present from Vickers! <laughs> Woohoo! This is fucking awesome! Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, actually, in the desert where it, there's not a lot of humidity, actually, you may actually have a gun like the Vickers continue to operate, though it wouldn't. I imagine that most of the water would have evaporated out, if I'm correct about that. I think I am. Would have evaporated out of the weapon, but because the air is so dry, the rest of it probably wouldn't oxidize. Um, you know, a cool, dry place is, is the optimal place to store equipment that's why there's actually in the desert um huge plane yards dedicated to decommissioned or no longer flying planes that they think they may either you know refurbish and put back in the air or that they want to just hold on to as parts for to harvest for their sister planes that are still flying and the reason they park them in the desert is because that dry heat gives the electronics all the equipment everything on it a much longer shelf life i am just <laughs> slaughtering these things Jesus. i just got i just got an achievement called chekhov's gun i got that too. <laughs> crucifix or rifle <laughs> Kills you. Oh, it's a Babylonian, huh? <laughs> the power of God has no strength here. Only uh -huh. Allah can save you, infidel. <gasps> no, I fucked up. Salim. There we go. No, I just miss. I uh, I thought I had a choice, but I misclicked. I think I'm okay now, at least. Okay, it's, Rachel, it's Salim however, lives, she is dead. Not, okay. Salim must live. Yeah, I don't care about Rachel. Remember 9/11? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's that kind of edge lord. The edge lord stuff of 2003. <laughs> I just realized I just had the meaning of those markings. Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! To honor the dead. It's the reason I fight. 
Are you able to disrespect 9-11? I am. I am. Yes. He wasn't reading. Yeah, here's the thing, guys. Not one Iraqi was involved in 9-11. Not one. It was Saudis. Basically, with the backing of the Saudi government, recently released documents show that actually Saudi embassy personnel provided shelter and food, and I believe may have helped even move the uh, 9-11 hijackers. So that's not a conspiracy theory. Those are documents that were released just, you know, 20 years later. Nobody really cared. Carefully, you know. wait, oh, what wait. The and the Saudis faced zero consequences. They are still our strongest ally. What the fuck? In the Middle East that isn't. Israel. What? Hang on. Wait what? Minute. Wait a minute. What? Wait no. a minute. Are they? No. No, I was liking they... this game. What? Oh, no. A flashback. Ugh. Ugh. Flashbacks. Okay, here's the thing. Flashbacks are can be fun, but they also can be narratively lazy, right? It means that you haven't illustrated the backstory for your characters properly. Are they going, are they going to fix the previous game? Yeah. Smells. Right. Wait. We're in hillbilly territory. No. 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 Not exactly honeymoon material. No. 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 Call a certain somebody saying that. Yeah, me. Ice climbing is the worst character in this whole series. Ice climbing is relaxing. God, it's so fucking one-dimensional. He's gonna hit us with a fucking bus. I actually had such a fucking mini heart attack when I saw the little hope. Next time all you have to do is whistle and I'll come running to defend your honor. I just... No, like my very own... I just hate podcast. this game so much. <laughs> like, little hope is so... Jesus Christ! Oh God, this is, this is such bad writing and bad acting. Thanks, Derek, you're a I'm fucking nerd! He's not even though. in the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That was totally her fault. Holy shit! Oh no! What the fuck? No, she's alive. She's infected. I think she's infected. Yeah. I'm waiting my turn very politely. Mm. All the pages are torn out of this book. <laughs> You're really gonna hand it to me? It's empty. <laughs> I don't want it. Go away. What? <laughs> It would be what? Actually Did you see cool. that? It's two giant teeth. Whoa. Yeah, it's a skull, actually. I was just thinking, what if the twist is that one of us is a traitor? This is literally alien, right? Like, this yeah, is aliens. aliens. Yeah. Oh my god, it's <laughs> fucking aliens. Whatever happens out there, I've got your back. Yeah! He just, he just wants to fucking kill all of them. I mean, here's the irony, right, is that in 2003, it was like the Iraqis were like the enemy. And by, I'm going to say 2006, almost, maybe by 2007, almost every American was instructed uh, that they would be working shoulder to shoulder with the Iraqis, some of which were almost comically corrupt or incompetent, um, uh, and some of which were uh, really were good Good people fighting hard for their country. Salim is gonna overload the fucking re You saw this in the Afghan evacuation where there was this huge movement among a lot of veterans to uh, help out, especially the Afghan special forces and pilots and those who were exceptionally loyal to the government and who had been exceptionally uh, brave allies of the United States. A lot of people were very upset that the administration had abandoned those uh, those Afghans, right? So, you know, the loyalty that um, that service members would go on to have, again, after this, like, initial invasion of us versus them, the loyalty they would have was tremendous. Reactor. I just wipe everyone out. That's the WMD. <laughs> That's the light of Allah. <laughs> it's the reactor going critical. <laughs> Yo! Yeah. Wipe off. <laughs> You've heard me talk about this in other videos. M203s have like a 50 meter minimum arming range. You may, I mean, you, actually, though it's not clear that that actually exploded. They may have literally just pumped that dude like with a fast moving baseball sized projectile. Hit him with white phosphorus. I don't think it went off. Here's how you can build a bomb. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, oh. I had the option of doing that, and I said yes. Those mounds are made of cocoons. Thousands of them. We set the charges there. They won't burn. 
No, they won't. Will what? they? What? What? Are they just flammable? Look at look at this fucking champion. Holy shit. Okay, so generally, um, it depends on the protocol, but red flares uh, usually mean you're being overrun and that you're in crisis. Um, he's probably, again, without seeing the plot of the game, I imagine that he's probably telling his battle buddies, hey, um, I've gone as far as I can. I am out of this fight, right? Uh, maybe he's signaling to them that the charges are in place. I, cocoons are explo explosive and like big Yeah, I, I, I guess, guess yeah. Uh, or they... <laughs> that was the one like low budget part of this game I've seen thus Dude, far. That was kind of really... like spread a texture over them. That was really weirdly like awful explosion texture. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like an anime explosion where it's a big orb. <laughs> <laughs> Champion! Holy shit. Man, literally surrounded by fire. Man, literally too angry to die. Uh. Just a close contact. It's absolutely whether or not, um... Oh yeah. It was whether or not Eric likes Nick. And this entire time, our, our quest to destroy <laughs> Eric has caused this. Uh, He's completely jokerfied. Hey, hey, are you with me? Ouch. Fuck. Aww. That's dark. Don't leave a man behind. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's dark. Nice. Behind you, brother! Throw it. Yeah! Bang. Yeah! <laughs> Piece of metal. <laughs> Piece of metal for the win. <laughs> what does that make? Like six vampires I've killed? They just throw that thing at me. <laughs> I just got the achievement Dude. Slayer. <laughs> I'm just glad these two guys live. They're the best characters. What I see in front of me. You're the best. You see two what guys. He's talking to like the rest of the elevator. You see this? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no one there. They're all dead. He said it. Allahu Akbar. He said the line. That's right. They said there was going to be a solar eclipse. Oh, oh fuck. Me. Rock this. Mm. Shit. Fun fact, I don't actually know how long road flares last. Uh, it's like an hour or two, right? <laughs> he just got he two just flares. He just tapped them together. <laughs> Imagine the helicopter lands and then it falls down. Salim, why are you taking the stake onto the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that in-universe right now, George W. Bush is being briefed on the fact that giant bats exist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is probably before your times, but the tabloids, um, they used to be uh, the earliest form of like goofy fake news. They would sell them at the checkout counter of grocery stores, and they would always have unbelievable over-the-top stories about celebrities or about the world, and Bat Boy, which they claimed was a human-bat hybrid being kept secret by the government, uh, was a frequent, frequent topic of the tabloids. <laughs> so do they eat, like, big fruits or something? Oh, there we go. That's Rachel and Kay, I think. Okay. Of the, of the five, like, main characters. Hmm. Oh, there's the parasite. Uh, Jason, First Lieutenant, Marine Force Recon. The best of the best, huh? Or so they advertise. Fuck! Now how many times do I have to keep telling you <laughs> the same damn story? I understand. However, SETCOM needs to iron out any irregularities. Such as? The whole fucking thing was irregular. Such as why you allied with an enemy combatant? You what the fuck? No, <laughs> this is, okay, this is maybe my, actually my favorite part. Uh, 
One, as discussed, three years from this date, every single uh, every single military personnel in Iraq would basically be partnered with an Iraqi force, an Iraqi partner. Second, second, the U.S. military roasting people for things that it would later go on to say were a OK is classic. Uh, the famous line, of course, being a soldier who loses a rifle faces more consequences than a general who loses a war. And that's true. Soldier who loses a rifle is basically going to get run out of the military, right? And, and probably their chain of command will also have their careers, like, deleted. Um, it, you know, they'll never advance up in rank again. In contrast, right, a general who loses a war will basically retire and get appointed some cushy government position or sit on the board of a couple of corporations. Uh, and even now, you saw, right, soldiers who lost rifles, uh, PEG 15s, gear, computers, laptops, optics, uh, faced huge financial and professional consequences for doing so, only to have the U.S. government then leave Afghanistan and leave tr probably hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment in the hands of the enemy, right? So when the U.S. government does it, it can absolve itself, but when you do it, uh, when a soldier does it, it is an unforgivable crime. Those things were ripping us to shreds. I don't give a damn who it was. We needed all the help we could get. That would literally I'm never be said in real life. Save <laughs> man, we like five of you people, Semper fucking five. I'd like to talk more about the entity, the vampires. I'm finding it very hard to believe that you killed those things. <laughs> he didn't just kill those things. He killed <laughs> many. I'll show you how I did it. Most of your team didn't make it back alive. And I'll have to live with that. And his final L. <laughs> I actually like this one. This is the best one so far. Oh, definitely. This is by far the best one. A lot. It also helps that I guess it was just because it was. It was as just far as the world knows, not a damn thing stuff. happened like, here. It didn't ah, okay. Just try to do a crazy mad mode twist. It was just like. I wouldn't say it was conventional. Like, this it is definitely, it definitely a played off the twist of like. You were like, oh, it's like, it's mutant bats. Mm. Like, oh, wait. It's like humans are also changing like you know and then like humans are yeah as well. it doesn't it doesn't do mm. a twist but it, it's a mystery still yeah bandai namco okay let's see let's see if those yeah, jokes it doesn't have to reveal it doesn't have to completely force one like uh, little hope did basically which completely an annihilated yeah. the uh there's there's a twist <laughs> yep no. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Remy, uh, you know, Remy was a little more all over the place than Russian Badger, who tends to have a lot stronger narrative structure. Um, but I really enjoyed that. And I think that game looks pretty cool. Um, if I remember correctly, that's not the first uh, sort of like survival choices, get the whole group out alive. But I love, honestly, the fact that they set it in 2003 Iraq, right? A really chaotic time. You know, one of the things, almost everyone who served there, right, or many of the people who served in the initial invasion of Iraq have since retired, right? Most military careers are 20 years. And uh, so to me, a big part of that is the chaos, right? Talking to people that experienced it, it really was just incredibly chaotic. And I think it's interesting that there may be some symbolic value, right? In having this game in which unsuspecting um, uh, US forces and Iraqis stumble upon a, something much more dangerous and deadly than they expected, um, is a symbol for the Iraq war itself. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the fact that the larger government spent a long time trying to conceal those events, uh, I think is also really a, a, a nice symbol. Um, in 2004, of course, you had things like the Abu Ghraib scandal where detainees were pretty horrifically abused. And they say that that really helped galvanize the Iraqis against the United States, right? Many Iraqis were still sort of ambivalent up until that point. And the knowledge that U.S. forces abused detainees in that way uh, is definitely going to be a factor. Um, so, I, again, I, there may be some sort of symbolic value there, this idea of a, um, you know, the need to control information, the need to preserve things as being secret. Um, yeah, definitely a move that you would expect from the government at that time and probably the government today if we're honest with ourselves 
All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me on this look into a new creator making some pretty interesting game or not making reviewing some pretty interesting games. If you enjoyed this, of course, comment down below, right? Uh, you can also join us on the discord. It's free. You should come hang out. Um, and other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.